Good morning. We will pay attention to fixed assets today, how to determine the depreciation if the figure is not given, and what the effect of fixed assets will be on the cash flow statement. So if we look at the balance sheet that's given, they tell us that the tangible assets at the beginning of the year was 3824. So that is my opening balance that I will put into my ledger account is 3824. My closing balance at the end of the year is 2790. So I will put that in as my closing balance above the total to bring it down below the total. Now what's different here from what you normally do in accounting is that they don't give you the figures separately for the fixed assets and for the accumulated depreciation. They only give you one figure. That means that this figure is the carrying amount. So it is this balance of 3824 is the cost price of the fixed assets minus the accumulated depreciation at the beginning of the year. The closing figure of 2790 is the as cost price of the fixed assets minus the accumulated depreciation. So because they're only using one account, we have to record everything in this account. So entries that you would normally put in your fixed asset account, you will record in this account. Entries that you would normally record in your accumulated depreciation account, you will also record in this account. Okay, then they tell us that land and buildings with a cost price of 1,2 million were sold at carrying amount. Depreciation is not written off on land and buildings, so therefore it means that this total asset was reduced with the cost price because there was no accumulated depreciation. So I will credit my property, plant and equipment account and I will debit asset disposal with the carrying amount, or in this case, the cost price. Then they tell us that new equipment was purchased during the year. So we want to include this a new equipment with our property, plant and equipment account. And we will record the 365000 on the debit side to indicate an increase in property, plant and equipment. Now they don't give us the depreciation. So because the depreciation is not given, we will work out the depreciation by balancing the account. So I will add up the debit side, 4189, subtract the 12 and the 2790 from it, and that will give me my depreciation amount. So in this property, plant and equipment uh, calculation, they can either leave out the depreciation or the amount that you paid for new fixed assets purchase or the amount for that you sold the current uh, the fixed assets at the end of the year whichever figure is left out you will work out by balancing so if we look at the cash flow statement we bought new equipment for 365,000 rand. So that caused an outflow of mon money under investing activities. Investing is how do you spend your money. Then we also sold fixed assets for 1,2 million. So that means that caused the inflow of money of 1,2 million. So although we bought new assets for 365, that caused the inflow. The assets that were sold caused the inflow of money. So it means that the total amount of inflow is 835,000. So what did we learn today? When the depreciation is not given, you can calculate it in your fixed assets account. Uh, if the fixed asset account and accumulated depreciation is not given separately, you will open one account and you will record everything in this one account at carrying amount. All the entries that you would normally record on the debit side, you will still record on the debit side. 
all the entries that you normally record on the credit side will still be recorded on the credit side. Okay, the asset disposal must be taken out at carrying amount. Therefore, you must make sure that you take the cost less the accumulated depreciation when you remove the asset disposal amount. In this case, the cost price and the carrying amount was the same because it was land and buildings. But if it's vehicles or machinery, you will have to record this figure at carrying amount. So you will have to take your cost price less the accumulated depreciation.